Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to take a look at our main options for free sky receivers. Now these are all 2.4 gigahertz receivers so these are not the new 900 megahertz or any other frequencies they've got. We're not looking at crossfires or anything else. These are just the free sky receivers and these are the ones that I have that I keep on hand and these are the ones that I will select depending on what I'm trying to do. So what I want to do in here is show you my thought process for each one of these and where I will select them because I know a lot of you get models you want to know what receiver to put in it and you're not sure and there's a whole bunch of factors that go into it. So I'm going to go through the small ones first going kind of in feature order as we go and then I'll cover the big ones and because there are still places where you may want the big ones. Several of them are in currently installed in models and I don't want to take them out. So I'm going to show you those in the models. So first up I'm going to cover the FreeSky XM receivers. We have the XM and the XM Plus. The difference between these two is obvious here. We've got two antennas versus one. So we have diversity. Also there's a big size difference. So the XM Plus is quite a bit bigger and that does play in my choice on whether I'm going to wire these up or not. They come with just pads and they do come with the pins if you want to solder pins on there and connect it. Sometimes I like to do that because I'm taking these in and out of models all the time. So I have a number of these that are actually have pins on them so I can just slap them in a model, plug them in and be ready to go really, really fast. This one happens to already be wired and I can solder these connections to whatever I'm going to use. For the last year, these have been my main receivers mainly because they're cheap. They're extremely cheap and right now you can get them for like 10 and 11 dollars. I will choose the XM in a model that has a 25 milliwatt VTX. So in a lot of two inch drones over the last year they come with 25 milliwatt VTXs. For as much range as I expect to get out of that this will go further than that. And that's one of the things I don't want to lose control before I lose video because if I lose video I may be able to maneuver the model so I regain it. So I want this to always outrange my video. So I pretty much only use this in 25 milliwatt drones especially if they're less expensive and not quite as fast. If I have a two or even a three inch that has a higher output, I will go with the XM Plus and I tend to default to this just because I prefer having multiple antennas for diversity just to make sure I have as much coverage as possible. Sometimes I can't fit this in a model, so I will go with the smaller model, but I prefer to use the XM Plus. At least I did for the last year. This may change. The big deal about these two compared to everything else that we're looking at later is these do not support any type of telemetry, meaning there's only three connections. There's no way to connect them to another UART to feed information to the radio. It can't warn me of low RSSI values. Now these both can be programmed to output that to your on-screen display. So you can load firmware to have that display on your on-screen display. So you can ha see that, but it's still not as good as your radio yelling at me, in my opinion. But they're cheap. I go through lots and lots and lots of receivers. I can't tell you how many receivers I bought in the last year. So that's why these haven't still been totally replaced for me. In my smaller builds where I'm not as worried about telemetry, I'm still very likely to use them because of cost and size. If you want to see how to wire in the XM Plus, I actually plugged this in in my ET125 video. So I'll link that up here and try and remember to link it down below on exactly how to install that one. So about the same time the XMs came out, this model came out, which is the original XSR. It's quite a bit bigger, but the big thing for this is it supports full telemetry. It's still very small, not compared to some of the others like the XM, but it's still small enough that it'll easily, easily fit in a five inch drone compared to some of the big cased models and it supports full telemetry so you can wire this into a UART and be ready to go. It does support diversity. One reason some people don't like this though is or they do is because the antennas are soldered on. There are no connectors so if you break your antenna you can't just plug a new one in you have to solder it on which is really a pain. I have one of these right now. Here I'll show you. Here we go show don't tell right there. Both of the antennas have basically been ripped off of this and I haven't fixed this yet because it's kind of a pain. I'm gonna have to solder those off. I actually bought connectors to solder onto here but I, I don't I don't have time for that. I'll get around to it eventually. Maybe I'll make a video of it. That's the plan at least. This model's basically discontinued. There's not a good reason to use this except you can sometimes find them super cheap now. If you have enough room for this one, it's a little bit heavier. It's still light, but whatever. It's, it's not very heavy. A couple grams. But if you can pick these up super cheap, they have pretty much all the same features as the newer higher end models that we're going to look at. It's just previous generation. 
but these do support full telemetry, so when, as soon as you connect it up, it will automatically read RSSI in your radio. It'll automatically, assuming you're using a Tyrannus and you have the audio all set up, it will automatically tell you what your status is, and you can program it to warn you about batteries. You can set it to read your battery voltage, all kinds of things from your flight controller. So for comparison, this is the XSR. This is the XSR M or E, depending on where you look. It's designed to go on a stack, but it doesn't fit nearly any stacks that anybody use right now. Same feature set, except it's cheaper. You can get one of these right now. I've got a code for it for $15. So it f supports full telemetry. It supports great diversity. It has really good connections. It has a plug, which some people like and some people don't. It is smaller and it's lighter. But there, you see, it has connectors on it. So if I screwed up one of these antennas, you just plug a new antenna on. And these antennas are pretty cheap. So this was great last summer. So we're talking like a year ago, six, oh my gosh, that's nine months ago at this point when this model came out and it was a really good option at the time. If you wanna see an install of that, here I put one in my Diatone GT200 and it connected up and it made it really, really easy with the cable that it came up with to hook that up and get telemetry going. Just plug it in, ready to go. It was a really nice setup. So there's a video for that if you wanna see that connection. So this is the RXSR. This is the new kit on the block, and it's probably the current king. If money's no object, just buy this one. Don't worry about any of the rest of this video, just use this receiver. It has all the same features as the XSR, plus more, I'll cover that in a second, and it's actually smaller than the XM Plus, and lighter. So it has all the size features of this, all the feature features of this, plus more. The only problem is cost. It's the most expensive, for the most part, of the receivers available. At the moment, I see them often for like $22, to $25. So that adds up if you're buying a lot of them when you can get these for half the price. But the feature set is outstanding. This is actually the reason I'm recording this video today is I'm gonna be installing this in a new model here in about five minutes. The other thing this adds that I haven't seen a lot of people use is it has an S bus in, meaning you can connect another receiver like an XM Plus and have it be a redundant input in case you lose your signal. Now, for most of our quadcopters, that's not too big of a deal, but if you're flying long range or bigger models, then having another set of antennas can be a really big deal. That's the one place Spectrum has really shined above FreeSky. I have friends that fly big gas planes and there's no way they would trust this receiver all by itself. They use Spectrum and they use a couple of satellite antennas, sometimes numerous satellite antennas moved around the model to make sure they never lose signal. This starts to give us that same ability because you can install this, put your antennas out as your main connection, and then put an XM Plus on the other side of the model. Wire it in here and you've got another set of antennas for inputs. Gives us really nice capabilities. Probably won't ever be needed by anybody watching this channel, but it's nice to have. So this is kind of the king at the moment. One more pro and one more con for the RXSR. The pro is the S port on all of these is inverted which can cause some problems, especially if you're using an F4 processor. But they would look ahead on this one and there are two pads here for making connections that are non-inverted. So if you can't use the cable coming out of here, you need a non-inverted port. Those ports are available so you can connect them up to your flight controller without having to do anything funky wiring wise if your flight controller doesn't support that in a command. One con for this is when they ship these, something was messed up and they didn't support Lua scripts. So if you want Lua scripts to work on this so you can mainly control your PIDs or your VTX, which is what I always use it for, you might not be able to do this and you need to go through and upgrade it. So I've got an upgrade video for the XSR. It's not the RXSR, but it's the XSR and it's pretty much exactly the same. The big thing to know is the cable that they ship it with plugs in, it's all ready to go. If you have an QX7, you can plug this into the bottom. If you have an X9D and you need to plug it in the back, you have to rearrange these wires and that's all documented in that video. It's the RXSR. There will be an install video of this very shortly and depending on when you see this, it might already be up and there will be a link for that down in the description as well. Okay, so this is an older model. This is the X4R and it's a lot, lot bigger. A couple years ago, this was probably the best model you could get for your drone. Now it's kind of outdated for that purpose, but it still serves purpose in a lot of other things. This is the wing that I flew, so I've actually got a review or first look at setting up a wing, and this is the receiver I put in there because wings use servos, and servos need individual plugs to connect to. There's no flight controller. Now I've ripped the heck out of this one, but it still works. 
Also, the motor connects directly to the receiver. This is old school. This is the way everything used to be. I can see a scenario where somebody's getting a wing and they grab their XM Plus and they're like, how, how do I wire this? Well, the answer is you don't. You buy an X4R. I've got four ports available for the motors, for each of my servos and my wings, and then another one, depending on what you're doing. So if you want to program in head tilt for your camera, you can do that. If you have a rudder on a plane, you would wire that in here. It gives you four channels to work with. More and more planes are getting flight controllers installed. In that case, you don't need this. But if you're going old school, manual controls, the X4R is the way to go. You'll also see D series receivers that preceded these. I would, for the most part, not go with those anymore. Um, with the X4R available, it does support full telemetry, as you can see here. This is the way to go. You can also plug in additional sensors if you want to for some reason. FreeSky has a number of sensors available that aren't as popular as they used to be because they would do things that your flight controller just has built in now. But in a wing, you might want some of those, like there's an airspeed meter and there's a GPS and all kinds of things. But it still manages to be small and light, unlike the next one. This is the FreeSky X8R. Now, it's installed in this model. I'm not taking it out. The reason I use it in this model is this model doesn't support SBUS or PPM. It might have supported PPM, but in this case, I'm using PWM. I have wires going to each individual channel on the flight controller. It does have a flight controller, it has a CC3D, and it's sending that output. I have, what, six channels configured here? This receiver does support SBUS, but not many people used it back when they were using this because with NASA 32s, it was kind of complicated. You had to make an inverter. It wasn't as easy to hook up as it is now. If you put one of these in your model nowadays, you would just use SBUS, but you really shouldn't do that unless you're doing something pretty exceptional. If I'm making a long range drone, I wanna just use it with my Tyrannus without anything extra, any extra modules, no crossfire, no 900 megahertz. This would be a good choice for that because with these antennas, you mount them, not that antenna, these two antennas, you get really excellent coverage. You can go miles with this connection. You get full telemetry readings back to your radio. So some of you may have one of these lying around just because it came with your Tyrannus, depending on when you got it. And that would be the thing that I would use it in. I would probably pick this on a long range over any of the micro models, even the RXSR, because I want the best connection that I can get with telemetry. It is a lot bigger. I mean, it's humongous, but this is what I flew and used in my first five inch drone. But we have one more to look at for that same option. Last and, well, probably least, is the L9R. This model is still available. It's probably a little outdated at this point since the 900 megahertz modules are available. But if you can get one of these, this is made for long range. It has the absolute best antennas for long range connections on it. And you can see it's right there in the name, long range. The downside of this unit is it has no telemetry. So if you're flying, extra far out there. It, you really want telemetry to be able to read back and know what your signal is before you fly out of range. That is the problem here. Now you'll see there is an RSSI port. What you do with this is a lot of your flight controllers, like the Omnibus, have an RSSI pad that you've never used before, you've never had to do anything with. What you can do is output this to that pad and then you can read the RSSI in your goggles. Now it's not quite as simple as that. This RSSI is actually feeding out an analog signal and it may not be tuned right for your flight controller. If you're gonna do that, I definitely recommend doing some research first to see exactly what to do. You may need to add a resistor, you may need to add several things, you may need to tune that so it works properly because your flight controller just reads the voltage on that pad to be able to show you a percentage and it might be wrong by a lot right out of the box. So make sure if you're gonna use that, go through an extensive setup for it and make sure you set it all up properly. I wouldn't say this is a likely model that you're gonna use anymore, but it's still available. And you know what? Sometimes you want it to be simple because I have one. I might just throw this in a wing sometime just to go out and go without having to spend several hundred dollars more on a Crossfire or a FreeSky 900 megahertz module. So there you go, my selection of free sky receivers that I will use on a regular basis. If you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. And if it's been long enough that these are all outdated and they've been replaced by something, just make fun of me because that's what will happen. Say you're old. But if that's not the case and you found this useful, let me know. Which one do you like? What's your preference? What's been your experience with any of these? So until next time, remember what you think may be the latest, greatest, awesome technology in a few years is gonna be outdated garbage. Welcome to Quadcopters.